Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian. Part of our team this week traveled to Nashville, Tennessee to cover the Army Aviation Association of America's annual conference and trade show, where our coverage is sponsored by Leonardo DRS. While there, we caught up with Ron Cutter. Executive Director of GE Aviation's T-901 turboshaft engine program developed to support the U.S. Army's improved turbine engine effort. We asked them for an update. We're here at Quad A as we are every year. Uh, we're a uh, large part of the, uh, the U.S. Army's uh, aviation infrastructure. Uh, we're here to uh, display our uh, T-700 uh, program as well as talk about uh, future programs like the T-901 for ITEP uh, other programs for uh, Chinook, FEL, uh, all the key uh, U.S. Army aviation programs that are going on today. What's new on the T-901 is uh, the fact that we're in the middle of the, uh, the ITEP competition. ITEP is the Improved Turbine Engine Program. Uh, that's the uh, U.S. Army program to uh, design a, an advanced uh, 3,000 shaft horsepower class uh, engine for replacement of all the engines on the U.S. Army's current uh, Black Hawk and Apache fleets. Uh, this program started about 10 years ago. Uh, it really started with the s and program called AIT, the Advanced Affordable Turbine Engine Program. So we uh, really did the technology demonstration uh, in, in the context of that program. Uh, it has now led up to the current phase of the program, which is the TMRR contract, which we are currently under, which is the Technology Maturation and Risk Reduction contract, which will lead to a preliminary design. And uh, we just had our uh, preliminary design review and hosted the Army uh, at our facility in Lynn, Massachusetts. Uh, very successful review. Uh, that uh, is currently being uh, assessed by the Army. We expect to get the go-ahead to, uh, to then get into the next phase of our proposal for the e &MD program. So once the TMR program is completed, our contract runs through September this year. We will uh, then be competing for the development phase of the program, the e &MD phase, uh, which will be winner take all. And so that uh, RFP came out for e &MD, uh, back in November of 2017. We submitted our proposal for phase one, which was everything but the technical uh, uh, volume for that proposal in mid-February. Uh, and so now post PDR, we will use that input of our current preliminary design for the engine as the input for our technical volume which we expect to get the go ahead here in the next few weeks and we will probably have that proposal submitted uh, by the middle of this year. In terms of the tech advanced technologies that we're incorporating into the uh, T901 to meet the ITEP requirements, uh, we're really taking advantage of leveraging the uh, investments that we've made on our commercial engine uh, programs. So we've invested over $9 billion in maturing these technologies in our current commercial uh, engine platforms and those technologies will have millions of hours of experience by the time they are uh, employed into the, the T901 when that goes into service in the mid-2020s. Um, we've also invested our own uh, money in terms of advancing uh, turboshaft specific technologies that we can incorporate into the T901 uh, to the tune of uh, over 300 million dollars. So that combination of the commercial and uh, military technologies are going to be incorporated into the T901. These are technologies like uh, CMC, ceramic matrix composites, uh, additive manufacturing, which is a huge investment uh, for GE as a corporation, not only within aviation. Um, advanced cooling techniques, uh, 3D aero design tools, um, advanced prognostics and diagnostics. So these will be technologies that will be embedded into the T901. And uh, again, that experience base from our commercial engine business will really reduce the risk uh, of those technologies. And by the time that these uh, engines are operating uh, with the U.S. Army, uh, those will be tried and true, proven uh, technologies. We're uh, currently uh, working to the Army's plan of down selecting to a single uh, engine contractor in a winner take all for ENMD uh, in the fourth quarter calendar year 2018. Uh, and then expecting contract award to occur uh, first quarter of calendar year 2019. So that's uh, kind of in line with the, the Army's plans and we're uh, in lockstep with that, uh, with that uh, effort. So we've uh, been working with the Army as, you know, for, for many years on this program, so we're in lockstep in terms of coordination on requirements, uh, the, the way we're designing the engine. Uh, essentially, uh, we've decided uh, to go with a single spool uh, architecture for our engine. Uh, it it uh, takes advantage of the many um, millions of hours of experience and the, the best practices that we've learned from the T700, uh, which is the current engine for the Apache and Blackhawk. 
Um, that architecture is a, a highly maintainable modular design which uh, really uh, reduces the, the maintenance costs and life cycle costs for, for the U.S. Army. So we're able to uh, incorporate the advanced uh, proven technologies from both our commercial uh, engine uh, lines as well as the investment we've made on uh, turboshaft specific uh, technologies and incorporate those into a single spool architecture such that uh, that simple modular design can meet the, uh, the program requirements for ITEP. The T-700 has been the, the workhorse uh, engine for the U.S. Army in terms of powering both the Black Hawk and Apache fleets since the, the uh, early 1980s. We currently have, together with our uh, civil variants of that engine, uh, over 20,000 engines delivered, over 100 million hours of uh, experience operating in every kind of uh, uh, environments and uh, mission that is, is uh, operated by the U.S. Army. And so we, um, we are currently just supporting that, uh, that program and working with the Army to make sure that uh, it's the most reliable and, and uh, mission effective uh, engine that they have in the fleet. In terms of the, uh, the, the Army's current focus on modernization leading to uh, platforms uh, like FEL, um, GE is very closely uh, working with the U.S. Army to understand the requirements. Uh, as we go forward. I mean, the uh, T-901 program is, is a great example of modernizing uh, the engine technology for the Black Hawk and Apaches and having the opportunity to build in growth capability for that engine to possibly fit the requirements for uh, the FEL uh, CAPE sets. And depending on what the priority is for the Army uh, going forward, whether it's CAPE set one, um, which would be a, a great alignment with the, the current uh, power range for the uh, ITEP engine, or whether it's you know, Cape Set 3 where we look at uh, what the, the real requirements are going to be from a power perspective. We can um, either grow the current engine or look at other uh, solutions based on uh, other GE engines and current technology that we can incorporate uh, into those platforms. So, you know, we're really trying to understand, like everyone else, where FEL is going to go, uh, what the CFTs now are going to bring to that uh, focus, um, and working very closely with the Army to understand those requirements going forward. Wonderful. And then what are your biggest take, what have been your biggest takeaways from the conversations that have happened on the conference side of Quad A, uh, from General McConville's comments, from other comments from Army aviation leadership and otherwise? Well, I think it, the, um, the comments that we've heard at the show uh, from speakers and just from the meetings that we've had is, is really this focus on getting um, the capability and modern uh, advanced capability to the warfighter as quickly as possible. And so I, I think, you know, as FEL uh, becomes uh, into focus and those requirements get solidified, I think there's going to be a real uh, focus on quickly getting those technologies incorporated and out to the warfighter. And I think that's really the consistent message that we've heard.